Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm just going to be using a full face of Dior makeup. In particular, we're focusing on the products that have come out over the last few months that I picked up, like their Skin Veil Primer, their Skin Glow Foundation, their No Powder Powder, and then I did pick up a couple items from their new Summer Dunes collection. So I have the bronzer today and then the Quint in the shade Mirage. And then finally, what I'm also testing out, it's not Dior, but I thought I'd throw in the new Gucci lipstick formula. So if you wanna hang out, get ready with me, see my thoughts on all the new and old Dior stuff, then just keep watching. So to prime my face, I'm going to use a relatively new primer from Dior. This is called the Forever Skin Veil. I bought this during the Sephora sale and it has a lot of claims. Extreme wear, a moisturizing primer, correction protection, illumination with sunscreen. I've used this a few times now. This is what the actual product itself looks like. It reminds me a lot of a sunscreen, as you can see. Like, I just feel like I'm putting sunscreen on. It's not as moisturizing as I typically prefer my primers to be. I don't know if it really does anything for wear of makeup, but I feel like I'm putting on sunscreen so I feel protected <laughs> from the sun. It does give that slight illumination. You can see it kind of adds a little bit of whiteness to my face, but I do feel like that does blend out. Um, I don't know that this really does anything for my skin if I'm being honest. I don't dislike it. I've been wearing it, but typically with primers, I prefer them to do something to the texture of my skin, you know? I like it when primers moisturize my skin. I like it when my primers blur my skin or are extremely glowy. I feel like this does none of the above. Like I want instant results with a primer. I mean, it might do something, but nothing to the degree that I've noticed anything. So I don't necessarily recommend it. I don't dislike it. I'm gonna continue using it. It's gonna stay in my collection. I'm not gonna return it. It does have SPF 20, but I just don't know. <laughs> Okay, so I did pick up one of the newer-ish foundations from Dior. Again, this is not brand brand new, but it's newer to their line. This is the Forever Skin Glow. I bought this in the shade 2.5N. I don't really like this foundation. Now, if you see, like it is a tad too dark on me. I did that on purpose. Summer's coming up and I can get pretty tan in the summer. And I just feel like this is a, the type of foundation that I would want to wear in the summer. So here's the deal. This is not my favorite foundation. Typically Dior creates some of my absolute favorite foundations. This one is not in that bracket. If I apply too much of it, I feel like I look really oily and my skin just looks looks textured and a bit aged. It's not a horrible foundation like the way I just described it as. It evens out my skin. My skin does look better, but I just have other foundations that I prefer and particularly from Dior. Like I said, Dior has some of my all-time favorite foundations. I'd be interested to try the matte version of this foundation because I feel like I might like it better. But this glowiness, I really kind of feel like ages my skin. And one thing that I really noticed with this foundation is less is definitely more. When I apply too much of this on, it looks thick on my skin. When I apply a really light layer like what I'm wearing right now, I definitely prefer it a lot more. <laughs> if this looked like how it did when I apply thick layers, I probably would have returned this, but when I applied very little of it, just as I'm doing now, I do actually kind of like it, but it's still not my favorite foundation. I've only worn it, I want to say, three to four times now, so I'm still testing it, and I might actually like it more when it's a better match for me in the summer, but you can see it does add some glowiness, but when I apply too much, I really don't like the way that this looks on my skin. Okay, I'm going to do my eyebrows, and I'll be right back. Eyebrows are done. Next, let's go into concealer. Not a newie, but definitely a goodie. We have the Forever Skin Correct. I've liked this more and more over the months that I've owned it. I wear the shade 2N. It's just a really great skin-like consistency. It gives the perfect amount of coverage. And when I first bought it, I actually didn't really love it. <laughs> but the more that I've had it, I really, really like it. I just think it's a great everyday concealer. And I really like it for wearing it on its own, like a spot concealer and using it almost as like a very lightweight foundation. I think it's really amazing for that. So it's very, very versatile. And I'm going to take a second. I'm going to carve out my brows with this. I've been trying to grow my eyebrows out a little bit more so they can be a 
tad thicker. So right now we're going through it. We have to do a lot of carving, a lot of drawing on. Okay, and to set the face, I'm gonna use the new Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. I really feel like the Backstage line brought Dior back to life because there was a time where I feel like nobody was really paying attention to Dior and I was trying to review their products, but nobody would ever watch them. So I never made up for the money that I spent. So I had to slow down on reviewing the Dior products and then they came out with the back stage line and then everything changed and I feel like especially in the last year they've really improved all of their products their launches are more exciting so I'm really happy to see the evolution of Dior products though uh, I'll talk about this later on but I really wanted the summer dune highlighters and I couldn't get my hands on them uh, because I was too late they sold out so now we're having problems where I can't get the products that I want because I sell out side note a new powder that I was interested in is the forever cushion powder I mean this has been out for a few months my mom actually ordered it it's in the shade medium so it's not my color but it is the same packaging as the new bronzer that I'm about to talk about just thicker so I wanted to try this in today's video but it's just too deep for me anyways as you can see this is from their summer collection Dior launched their forever natural bronze I already know it's gonna be amazing so the packaging cushiony it's super cute I got the shade number four it took a while for the lighter shade shades to come out. I believe there are like nine or ten shades in the line and the first shades number five through like ten or nine or whatever it was came out and I just knew they would be too dark for me so I waited and I waited and I waited. Finally one through four came out so I ordered number four and this looks like it's going to be the perfect shade. I'm using a refer number five brush. And I don't like how Dior releases their products from one collection at different times. It really frustrates me because you have to make multiple orders in order to have the whole collection. Okay, this bronzer is beautiful. This shade is beautiful. Uh, so if you're my skin tone, number four is perfect. Wow. That blended on so nice and it's like the perfect neutral yet still warm color it defines the cheek i probably could have even gone to shade number three i won't go back because this is still a really nice shade for me so this was my first time using this and I really enjoy it. So I recommend this. It's very, very pretty. I've been dying to try this bronzer out. It's been sitting in my collection for a little bit. And yes, I had to try it on camera. Okay, let's do eyeshadow first and then we'll finish off with blush. So this is also from their Summer Dune collection. They also came out with another quint and I ended up with the shade Mirage. I think this one is more readily available. It seems that the other one is harder to get your hands on. Haven't touched it. How beautiful is this? Now online, I wasn't as excited for it. It's actually 20 times more beautiful in person. I love the kind of tie-dye feature that we have going on. Let's swatch these. And these Dior Quints have gotten a lot of attention lately because they truly have improved their formula. Because when I was originally into Dior before they kind of updated their line, I was never truly impressed by their eyeshadows. But of late... They've been really, really nice. Now I noticed their summer, not just summer, but their seasonal collections sometimes can be a little bit hit or miss. Their traditional line, now that they've just updated, those quint formulas are really nice, but I have noticed that their seasonal collections can be a little bit hit or miss, but here are what the swatches look like. So as you can see, they're very sheer. And they have a nice sheen to them. So these are a bit different than their permanent line right now, but I think they're gonna be really pretty. So let me prep my eyes. We're just gonna do a simple, warm, kind of summer vibe. And like I said, they have another one that's out. I believe it might be available on Selfridges. I could be incorrect about that. I don't even know where to go though. This is kind of a weird set of colors. So we're going to start off with this shade. It's not quite as obvious. What's the crease color? What is the lid color? But this is a really nice color for the crease and it does have some shimmer but don't be afraid of that. Sometimes that can be more flattering than a dry matte especially if you have mature eyelids. Something with a little bit of a sheen, more so probably a satin, might make your eyelids look a little bit more hydrated whereas a really dry matte can kind of dry your eyes out sometimes. That's really pretty. Not a lot of depth in this palette though. I'd argue that this is the darkest shade. Well, I mean, I'm gonna try this just for fun. Yeah, that's not dark at all. You can see it's just like a really light shimmery shade. It's a fun pop of orange. Yeah, definitely not a lot of depth in this. I'm gonna take this shade. I'm gonna put it all over the lid. It's really pretty. I'm gonna put this light pinky shade kind of right on top to kind of 
brighten up the eye. So these shades are very subtle. I wouldn't say they're bad quality. I actually think they're really nice quality. Nothing overly pigmented. I think these are an intentional soft wash of colors, an intentionally light palette for the summer. I definitely would like to see just one shade with more depth though because the darkest shade, I mean, you can't be much darker than me to get depth with this. And the shades are kind of really close together. Like it doesn't really matter where you put what, you're kind of gonna get, I feel like, the same type of look. But it's pretty. Get some more of the depth shade right out here. Then we'll put some of the gold shade right in here. All right guys, I mean, it's really pretty. I think it's a really soft, easy wash of color for the summer. Unless you're really into this type of look or you're very fair, I don't necessarily recommend this. It's beautiful to look at. The look is really pretty and fresh, but as you know, Dior is not the most affordable brand. So if you're thinking, is it really worth the money? I'm gonna go with no. I think the quality is nice. It's just an intentionally soft palette. And if you are of a medium or deep complexion, you're not gonna get too much from this other than a pop of like orange or pink. I think that the colors are a bit redundant because they are very, very close to each other, just a slightly different tone, but they're all kind of in the same shade range. But they all kind of have the same depth. I don't know you guys, it's not bad quality. Like you can tell this is a nice quality palette and that the softness was intentional, but it's a lot of money for that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I can't recommend it if you're really eyeing it. Now for blush, I pulled out this one from their collection last year. This was like their summer collection from last year, so you can't get it anymore, but I thought it'd be really pretty. I also stole this from my mom's collection. This is the Dior Coral Blush. Hmm. So this one is still available. Both are beautiful. Dior has the best powder products for the face. Th they both would be perfect, but I just really want to use this shade right here. So unfortunately, I don't believe you can still get your hands on this blush but if you did buy this last year this is your reminder to use this this is in the shade number 431 look up dior color games this is the collection that it was from and ugh, dior has the best blushes this was right before i would say dior really kind of grew in popularity and reformulated everything and got their name out there again. These blushes are so stunning. There's a pink one in this collection as well. Not to make you feel bad if you wanna pick it up and you can't, but the formulation is beautiful. The glow that it has is so subtle. I'm happy I could pull this out. So <laughs> I'm sorry if you wish you could get your hands on this, but I wanted an excuse to use it. So I pulled it out for this Dior video and it's old. Now, in the summer collection, so technically what's in their summer collection is the bronzer and the quint that I just used. There's more. I'll link you down to the Dior website down below. They also release two luminizers that look beautiful. And I always buy, when I can, the new Dior luminizers because they're the best formula. And I've been trying not to overbuy because I'm so busy with work. I feel like if I buy too much, I can never really keep up with actually putting the videos up anyways. So I try not to overbuy so that I don't force myself to overwork. I intentionally said I was gonna pick those up though eventually, just not right on the spot when I saw they were available. And now they are no longer longer available. So I want them. I plan on picking them up because the Dior luminizers are so pretty, but I don't have them right now. So I put out this luminizer to use today. This is the hollow pink, but I really don't think it's going to go good with this look. So I actually am interested in using one of these. So I want to try a mixture of the gold and the pink together. We'll use both of these as luminizers because look at this formula. It's really, really gorgeous. Now this does have a bit more pigmentation on my face. It's not actually a luminizer. It doesn't brighten up the face, but I'm just gonna put it there for a little bit of an extra sheen and it works. It's not ideal, but it still looks very, very pretty. I look very summery right now because of that. I really like the color that that brought. I'm gonna go off, I'm gonna do some liner and lashes, and we're gonna finish off with the lips. Now, I didn't pick up a Dior lip color to use today because when I placed my Selfridges order for the collection items, I picked up 
the new Gucci lipstick formula to dry out. So I'm just gonna try it out in this video. So I'll be right back. Liner, lashes, mascara is on. I've lightly lined my lips with the Pat McGrath Bare Rose Lip Liner. And I know this isn't Dior, even though this is a Dior video, but I want to try this new Gucci lip product. And this is the same family as Dior. So this is a newer formula from them. This is the Glow and Care Lip Color. It's supposed to be very moisturizing. And I picked up the shade 214 Call It A Day. So here's what the packaging looks like. Absolutely beautiful. It's a slim lipstick. It's kind of more mauve. It doesn't necessarily go with my look, but I don't we're trying it anyways. Oh yeah, it's like a shine lipstick. Oh, that's pretty. And it smells like powdery, like a pretty luxury powder. Mmm, how cute is that? That's really pretty. I mean, I think a peachy lip color would have looked better, but I really like that. So give me a second and I'll tell you my final thoughts on all the products. Here's what this fresh summer look is looking like. I would say my takeaways from this video as far as the new uh, summer collection, I bet you the luminizers are amazing as they always are from Dior. Unfortunately, not in love with the Quint. I think it's very pretty and I definitely think there's a market for it. But if you have a similar taste in makeup that I do, I would pass on this. I don't really think it's worth it, but it is a really pretty summer palette. But I think Dior has better and they have other palettes that I would push you in the direction of over that one. The bronzer however absolutely beautiful I definitely recommend this if you're into luxury bronzers luxury bronzers are amongst my favorite luxury items to purchase and this one is nothing short love the packaging love the color of this there's so many colors in the range based on your skin tone as well so that's awesome now as far as all of the other new items I would say the one that I would recommend the most is the Dior backstage face and body no powder powder you literally cannot feel the powder on your face at all. Taking a look at the other products I use, I don't think the Forever Skin Veil is all that, nor do I think the Skin Glow Foundation is all that. They're both good. Like I'm going to keep these and continue using them, but there are other products in the line that I prefer. The concealer, in my opinion, is a must have. And obviously you can't get the specific Dior blush that I used, but Dior does have a beautiful blush formula if you are interested. Oh, and the Gucci lipstick. She's really cute. I think there's a lot of other products on the market that are similar to this right now, but I really like the thickness that this has. The moisturizing properties in this are really nice. So I'm a fan of this. I like this a lot. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.